Welcome, welcome to the Bella Blog. I'm glad you can join us. Welcome, 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 Saints. Well, I just want to say I had a dream this morning. I'm sorry, I'm all walking around. I have my dog in my hand. Um, it was, uh, I first, before I, I say anything, I asked Jesus to plead the blood of Jesus over this video. Any words that come out of my mouth, let it be in the spirit of truth and from the Holy Spirit and the Lord Jesus Christ. And um, I hope that anybody out there that watches has the ears to hear and eyes to see. And it blesses them in the name of Almighty Jesus Christ. Amen. So I had this dream about the Statue of Liberty. And it wasn't good, you guys. It was like this picture that I have on the screen and and she was like broken in pieces that's what I saw a bunch of pieces you know she was just folded up on the ground and it like a, a pile of rubbish you know it was just a pile of rubble that's what it looked like just all in pieces you know it wasn't completely shattered but it was all in pieces that's what the Lord showed me this morning and I was dreaming um, I just remember looking at it and then next thing I know it started put itself back together and it was trying to stand up and it was like you could see you know how where all the pieces that were broken it was like it was almost like it was glued back on like Frankenstein it kind of reminded me like that you know but it didn't have the stitching it just it was seemed like it was all glued back on and um, she started to stand up but she was like all tattered she was all dirty and and she was just she was tattered okay and um she tried to stand up and she did she stand up and she was like all broken up and all kind of smashed up but she managed to stand up and when she did she was all dirty and gray and and her dress was dirty and she her it looked like her arms were broken she but she was trying to stand up when she did stand up, she started to attack us, you know, like the people, the American people in this dream. And I remember um, she was attacking everybody. And it was like our liberty was attacking us. That's how it was in this dream. Liberty was attacking us. And um, I just remember trying to get away, and I just kept seeing her trying to attack everybody. You know, Liberty, had, it was like, it was just when I saw Liberty, Liberty had fallen. And, um, it was like, it was like, you could just see, like, all the corruption, all the, it was just real bad. So, um, I asked Jesus and the Holy Spirit to lead me to this understanding of this this dream and he brought me to a few uh, scriptures first one was Daniel 240 it says finally there will be a fourth kingdom through strong as iron for iron breaks and smashes everything and as iron breaks things to pieces so it will crush and break all the others just as you saw that the feet and toes were part of baked clay and partly of iron so this will be a divided kingdom yet it will have some of the strength of iron in it even as you saw iron mixed with clay as the toes were partly iron and partly clay so this kingdom will partly partly clay so the people will be a mixture and will not remain united any move than iron mixes with clay and that's how it was. It was Liberty was attacking us in this dream. And it was trying to divide us. It was, you know what I mean? It was, we were being divided. And this is like a perfect scripture to explain that. Um, you know, it's like we're being divided as a nation. You know, traitors in our federal government, you know, they want to, to attack to attack us. They want to attack our free speech, arrest us for you know for denying any kind of you know gun rights they just want to take all our our rights away you know the right wants to rest the left and the left wants to rest the right and the victor comes to spoils you know like a snowball effect and it's it's making people angry and it's that's why i saw liberty falling you know 
Um, after that, I saw, you know, the, the, the Lord led me to Daniel 2.28. But there is a God in heaven that revealeth secrets and maketh known to the king Nebuchadnezzar what shall be in the latter days. They dream and the visions of thy head upon thy bed are these. And, and then um, also led me to Daniel 2.41. And whereas thou sowest the feet and toes, part of the potter clay and part of iron, the kingdom shall be divided, but there shall be in it of the strength of the iron, for as much as thou sawest the iron mixed with miry clay. And, um, you know, that just like totally resonated in my spirit, you know, when I was, I was, you know, the Holy Spirit was conveying this to me. And then again, he led me to Dan 2.43. It says, And whereas thou sowest iron mixed with merry clay, they shall mingle themselves with the seed of men, but they shall not cleave one to another, even as iron is not mixed with clay. Again, you know, that's what's going on right now. Everything is being divided. Um, the enemy is really dividing everything. Dan 2.44 also I was led to that scripture and it says and in the days of these kings shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed and the kingdom shall not be left to other people but it shall break in pieces and consume all of these kingdoms and it shall stand forever amen you know that's the Lord saying you know these are all these pieces I'm going to consume them and we're going to live under one kingdom you know my children um also i was led to second peter 2 19 through 22 kjv while they promised them liberty they themselves are the servants of corruption for of whom a man is overcome of the same is he brought in bondage and that's what they are doing you know i had a dream a while back where i saw obama and he was holding a baby in his hands you know, and it was all naked when I saw Obama stand there holding this baby. It was a white baby, and I saw black tape over his mouth and black tape bound around his, you know, whole body around his arm section, you know, where his, his chest is. And he was bound like he was being bound and restricted from movement and from speaking. And that's it's what what's going on right now um, as far as like them the pre-programming everything I was watching TV the other day and it was like everything I saw was just every news article that came on the news or on regular TV you know announcements it was like we were being pre-programmed and brainwashed you know like psychological warfare on the TV um, that's how it felt you know it, it, what they're it's being seen is not what's being you know like what's being perceived is really not what's going on it's a, a big deception and um this dream was showing us that liberty is, has fallen and it's become very corrupt and um we're being divided as a nation because of all the traitors in our federal government anyways god bless you guys but remember, Jesus is coming. That's the good news. Remember what he said in that one scripture, Second Peter, I was talking about? We're not supposed to fear, okay? I mean, Luke 10, 19 and Isaiah 54, 17, check those out. Our dominion over the realm of Satan is complete. The demons are the ones who fear us. Because we are God's children. And James told us that demons tremble because they know what the situation really is. James 2.19. He said, resist the devil and he will flee from you. And that's in James 4.7. And the word flee in the Greek translation means to run from something or someone in terror. And the demons are just terror stricken when we use the name Jesus according to the word of God. The only exception to this were, would be by a bystander who is not a believer or someone who is unsure of his position in God. For this reason, we recommend that in spiritual warfare, our only spirit-filled believer who understand that they are overcomers in the name of Jesus, our Lord, to be present. And so we're supposed to be walking by faith. You know, do not wait for a physical confirmation to prove that something has happened. Nothing may happen on the surface, but at a great spiritual process, 
has been set in motion the moment we utter God's word in faith. And the victory is our, always ours, okay? Amen. Hallelujah. And when Jesus cursed the fig tree, he died immediately, but from the roots up. And it took time for the results to surface. And to see that in Mark 11, 20 through 21. And we walk by faith, not by sight. And we have to learn how to use authority, okay? over what's going on because I notice a lot of people are being attacked these days because we're living in the end days and uh, the spiritual warfare is is running rapid even you know the Christians are attacked and we got to remember to use authority and speak to the enemy in a normal voice of authority and it isn't necessary to scream the less sure the person is of the word many times the louder he shouts as thou he were trying to frighten the devil with his loud voice and the only thing that frightens the devil is Jesus Christ. Remember that. You know, spiritual warfare is a fact of life, okay? It's not an elective. It is a fact of life. And some Christians erroneously believe that the moment a person accepts Christ, he will never have to deal with demonic attacks again because Jesus defeated Satan when he died and rose from the dead. And if that were true, then why did Paul tell Timothy, fight the good fight of faith in 1 Timothy 6.12, huh? Tell me. And Paul also said, put on the whole armor of God. Why? That ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh or blood, but against principalities. And against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. And that's in Ephesians 6, 11 through 12. If you don't know where it is, go look that up. And he says we wrestle. And that he lists the power we have at our disposal to win the wrestling match. Truth, righteousness, gospel of peace, faith, salvation, word of God, and praying in the spirit, you know. Check out those verses on 14 and 18 in Ephesians 6, 11, and 12. True, Jesus won the battle over Satan, but we must maintain that victory on a daily basis in our lives, okay? And we were saved when Jesus died on the cross, but we are still to work out our own salvation, and that's in Philippians 2, 12. And there's a daily part to our salvation that we are responsible for maintaining okay it's no more none of this one saved always saved doctrine okay we have a, a maintenance that we need to do on ourselves but anyways god bless you guys have a wonderful wonderful day okay god bless you bye now thanks for listening to me too and taking that time out i really appreciate it all right bye love you